Hello, I'm Toycat and welcome back to our second channel video. Today I figured I'd explain exactly what happened in the United Kingdom general election of 2019 because it did happen just last night and I figured I'd explain as someone living in the United Kingdom because if you are online you might have seen a news headline that tries to sensationalize one particular aspect of this election and tries to really focus on it and act like it's all about that but the truth is when over 30 million people get together to do uh, you know democracy together and when that's happening over 650 individual seats across a country like the UK you're going to have lots of different Different pictures kind of forming and that's why I figured in today's video let's explain that obviously you know the blue party won they have the most seats and also a plurality uh, you know required to win but also you can see how the red party has done pretty badly in this election even worse than the blue party's done better you can see how the yellow parties made some gains but also the orange uh, the pink and a lot of other parties are kind of down so what's the deal with all of that how about I explain with this video right here so let me start with the kind of headline of this one which is the fact that the uh, the blue party have uh, you know won this election which is quite Quite impressive because they've won it with a majority which hasn't been seen in a very long time. In fact, it was considered quite near impossible for the Blue Party to actually get sizable majorities because of how the electoral landscape changed in 1997. In fact, of the last, uh, you know, four, uh, you know, separate now it's been four separate elections that the Blue Party have won, but they've won all of them either having to go minority coalition, minority, you know, like supply confidence, or they've just had very slim majorities, which means that you know the smaller your majority in the UK, uh, that means that the harder it is to actually pass legislation. Because if you have, uh, you know, you know, you need 326 uh, seats. Realistically, it's more like 319. But you need 320-ish seats if you want to be able to have a majority in the House of Commons, so you can pass your legislation. Um, but the interesting thing is, the more seats you have, the fewer, you know, like a single rebel can hold you back in your own party. If you have exactly 319, if you have a uh, 326, there's like seven rebels that have to get together. And the larger your majority, uh, the fewer the number of rebels can, you know, actually, the more rebels you need together before they can actually stop your government and therefore the more power you as a party have over them. So this is the first time in a very long time we've had the Blue Party actually having control over not just uh, the country but also to some extent a large control in their party with a majority of 86 because they're you know they needed 326 they got 364 this means that for even if all the other parties band together still they need a lot of uh, their own rebels to vote against them to lose which is quite a significant thing and you might say wow so they won their first actual like you know majority majority that's significant and isn't like single digits since 1987, which again was thought to be impossible for a while now, how many votes did they gain? What impressive program did they put to the country? And actually, if you look at the vote share, they didn't actually make these impressive gains. They didn't make these incredible, uh, you know, like uh, you know, gains in that way. Instead, they did uh, kind of well in you know 2017. Um, but you know, like uh, the Labour Party did a little bit better. The Red Party did a little bit better. Uh, but instead, if you look right here, you can see how like, oh yeah, what actually happened is their vote share went up 1.2 percent. They weren't even the biggest winner in this election in terms of percentage points, not percentage increase in terms of like it, it's basis points. So like the this is quite impressive. Uh, you know this is a 50% increase for the orange. This is a you know 100% or infinite percent increase for the light blue party. But they were at they only gained 1.2 percentage points. What really happened is the red party just collapsed, collapsed overall. And you can see this when you look at the map right here. Here's the 2017 map. Here's the 2019 map. They look pretty similar, except maybe you spot some more yellow in Scotland. Which again we'll get to that in a second. Um, but you can see how what really happened here is in the you know in the center of the country the Red just kind of collapsed. If we look at the changes, you can see how like, oh yeah, a lot of seats, especially in England, but also in Wales, um, went from being red seats to being blue seats. And uh, if we actually, you know, this looks kind of small, like, wait, how does that create such a resounding majority? We're talking almost double the seats of the next largest party. Um, you can see how if we go to the cartogram, which is where it's actually every seat is the same size, because obviously metropolitan seats are much smaller. Uh, London is a giant city, but it's uh, in terms of population, but not in terms of the map. So this is the size of London. London, if you uh, equate it population wise, you can see how the changes were not actually very many in London. Like, oh, yeah, so uh, the Blue Party lost two seats and they gained two seats. Um they lost one to the orange, they lost one to the red, and they gained two from, uh, you know, like the, the red party. So London actually stayed the same, but everywhere else in the country, it's just blue, 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 lots of blue gains. And the reason behind that is basically uh, the North has uh, kind of rejected the policies of the red. And we'll, we'll dive into that when we talk about the red a little bit. But this is how they won the election. They kind of picked up a lot of seats they haven't traditionally picked up. They lost a few, uh, if we look at St. Albans, uh, that one went to the orange party. Uh, they lost a few to other parties, uh, especially, 
especially north of the, you know, north of the border. They lost a lot of seats in Scotland as a result of the Yellow Party doing well. Um, however, their win over the Red, their kind of destruction of them, uh, mostly over Brexit policy, but there are some other things you could debate in there, uh, are kind of what led to this. So yeah, the Blue Party did very well, mostly by just picking on a weak Red Party and destroying them in a bunch of seats. And uh, in case you're curious, like, okay, so is this the Blue Party's win or the Red Party's loss? Looking at this map, it isn't a Blue Party win. This is a Blue Party stay about the same as last time and a Red Party collapse. Minus 7.8% is a huge downswing. One of the biggest swings we've seen uh, for the Red Party. And in case that seems like, okay, so what's the, what does that really mean? Uh, you know, besides just looking at, look at this, by the way, look at the, the red just fade away. Um, let's talk about how this happens because you might say, how did so many seats, especially in the north of England, which is famously the red heartlands, like this was a kind of bad result for the red. They, they should have picked up more seats in 2017 than they did. There's a lot of seats around here uh, that perhaps should have gone uh, towards the blues. Why why did that not happen? Well, let's talk a little, uh, you know, here's the interesting thing to me. Let's look at this, uh, you know, thing right here and let's, uh, you know, look at some individual seats because when you go to 2019, you see a lot of them fade away. You can see how like, oh yeah, a lot of these kind of like, you know, I guess the south from the north, the north uh, kind of fade away. And you see some seats like red car, uh, you know, fade away. So red car, um, it's a place in the north. Uh, it's a constituency where the, cons you know, the blue party gained 12.8%, which is kind of nice. But what really happened, you know, this was a, this was such a safe seat before, but they lost negative 18%. They had a 55%. It's one of the few seats in the UK where a majority elected the person rather than just, uh, you know, the largest single party. But they were absolutely destroyed in this election. Even the Orange Party went down. Uh, but what, what seemed to have happened is the light blue parties swept in and got some of that vote share. And a lot of it has gone to the blue party largely for Brexit reasons. That is what people like to say. Uh, I'll actually analyze it in a second. I think that's broad oversimplification. But yeah, Brexit is one of the issues that dri drives a wedge between the two big factions uh, or the two biggest voter bases in the Red Party. There's the Metropolitan, you know, the, the Metropolitan vote held up entirely fine. If we look at this map right here, you can see how like, oh yeah, in, in London, it held up just fine. If we look at even other uh, cities, like if you look at around the Newcastle area, in Newcastle and Leeds, it held up just fine. In the inner city areas, their vote was just the same as it was before. But the other, you know, like the young metropolitan, the very, uh, yeah, like, let's call it liberal to be simple. Um, although I hate that term because it means nothing because it varies based on your country. Um, but let's 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 be like, yeah, there's the socially liberal, let's keep it that simple. Uh, there is the kind of more, uh, you know, I, I guess more, del uh, you know, the, the issues they deal with are very different inner cities when you're young as well, young inner city, etc. And the other kind of traditional heartland for, uh, you know, the Red Party is usually considered to be not even, you know, like uh, metropolitan, uh, but more rural areas that had huge industrial stuff going on there. And that's why all these seats were traditionally just theirs. They weren't even really at risk for them for most of the time. They didn't need to campaign for the most part. And this, you know, that wing of the Red Party has entirely not showed up or they've even done the unthinkable. They switched to the Blue Party, which, you know, in a lot of cases, like people swear to never do because this is the part of the region where the Blue Party is largely hated. Yet, you know, this is why they would never campaign there. Yet, when you look at another seat, Let's look at Bridge End right here, which is actually in Wales. But, you know, actually, let's, let's go to Lay, another like north, but from the other side, the north. But again, plus nine is good. Minus 15 is catastrophically bad, though. Uh, if we look at Bridge End, which this is a Welsh one, so we're seeing a kind of different picture there. But where, you know, this is this is Wales. Uh, only plus three, but minus 10 is what leads to this result looking so uh, stark as it does. And also, look, a tiny bit for the Orange Party. How nice for them. But yeah, long story short, this election is really one of losing. Uh, you know, the, the north to the blue from the red. The, the red vote either didn't show out or switched. You can't actually know for sure which it is. The reality is it's probably a lot of both, right? Like a lot of people decided, no, I'm not going to vote for that party that doesn't represent me anymore. And a lot of people decided, uh, you know, what? actually blue party wants to get my favorite issue done probably Brexit related, but it could also, there's a few other issues that you could throw in there because the, basically the reason that, that what it seems like uh, looking at this election, which by the way, was the red results, uh, red's worst was result since 19, uh, actually worse than 1983. I mentioned this election yesterday as like the disaster for red where they went super far left um, and they, you know, they got 209 seats, which was their worst result uh, in a very long time. They actually got fewer than 209 seats this time. If you look 203, they did worse than their previous worst worst result in like the last decade, which means if you want to find the last time they did that badly, you have to go back to 
1835, and that is staggering. You have to go back 80 years uh, to find an election where the Red Party did that badly, where they got 154. Even then, though, it's not quite a fair comparison because there were fewer seats, only 615. And even then, they did a better vote share in this terrible uh, election of 1935. So really, you have to go back to really, like, you know, earlier in the 1920s or 30s, basically, which was when the Red Party formed as a whole. This is their worst election result, arguably, in a lot of ways, ever. This went tragically for the Red Party. This is not a story of blue gain. This is a story of red destruction. And here's the interesting thing about this. This is, um, every single news outlet's gonna try and spin this in a different way. Um, that if you say it's all about Brexit, you're trying to defend the policies of the left. If you say this is all about Corbyn, you're kind of trying to defend the pro-Remain stance in some ways. Um, basically, there is two, uh, again, there's kind of two diametrically opposed things here. Uh, people are trying to defend either their super far left policies, or which, you know, again, you can argue the Red Party did or didn't have, but they were definitely espousing very far left rhetoric with pretty far left policies, let's be fair. Um, but like, so they're, they're super returned to the very far on the left end of spectrum. Nationalizing broadband, like, ever, you know, nationalizing anything is always going to be controversial and some people agree that some industries be better nationalized some people wouldn't be uh, the railways are ones that people don't think are being handled well so they think it might be a natural na uh, you know nationalization nationalizing water people then start to get a bit hazy nationalize broadband why not nationalize the moon you know which you know I'm just, I wouldn't be surprised to find in there this is like um, a super far swing to the left surprisingly you'd figure that's how you'd hold on to the you know the, the reason they justified it the reason they said we need a lead like this is because they wanted to gain back Scotland which until, uh, you know, 2010 had actually, or 2015 really, until 2015 it had been a red wave. They did not win back uh, Scotland. They did not win back, you know, even the North, which like, yeah, the North, we need them to keep voting red. And some of them, some of them had switched in this election. Like, look how many blue seats there are in the North, the region that hates the blue party. This is what's happened as a result of them trying to hold on to their, you know, to, to Scotland, where they have one seat, by the way, one in 59, by the way, and uh, in the north, you can see the same things kind of happen there. Uh, this was a wipeout election that recovering from genuinely might be tricky. Like, uh, admittedly, you know, the third party's quite away from taking their place. Admittedly, there's the fact that they have 32% of the vote is something. There are some voters who never showed up before who have voted for red because of such a radical program. But a lot of voters who decided, actually, I don't know about that radical program, as you can see with a map right here. So yeah, uh, the way you swing this election is gonna really depend on, like the way the red party swings this election is something they need to do internally if they want to maintain their course on the far left, which, you know, did happen in 1983, by the way. Uh, they figured, like, you know what? We're going to try and go, like, a little bit... I wouldn't say far left, but, like, a little bit more center left. And, uh, yeah, the way that went for them is, like, okay, well, they gained 20 seats. That's, like, that's like one only one of their worst results of the last century. It took until 1997 for the Red Party to actually get back in power with, uh, you know, Tony Blair, who was famously... Uh, quite centrist on the spectrum of left-right. Um, and the really interesting thing about this one to me is the fact that Tony Blair, you know, even though he's hated by a lot of the Red Party, because generally speaking, the parties want, you know, like, the average of the country is the center. That's what the center is defined as, the average opinion of the country. Whereas the average in each party is gonna be center left or center right, depending on whether you're talking about a leftist, rightist party. So in the in the leftist, in the, the left party, the Red Party in this case, um, a lot of their opinions are going to be very, heavily, uh, you know, swinging towards that left, and therefore when someone's in the centrist, it's to the right of them. That's uh, that's uh, almost as bad as the blue party, right? Uh, so yeah, this this guy is actually hated by a lot of the current wing, the very far left wing especially, who are like, wow, I mean, all those terrible things he did. Um, obviously, he was centrist with a, a red bent, and this kind of meant that, that, you know, he won a lot of elections. He won three in a row, which is the most that uh, the red party has ever won in a row, and uh, also he got the largest majority the red party's ever gotten. But here's the, mo here's the more tragic fact about this. He is the only leader in the last 45 years to win a, uh, you know, the only red leader, I should say, to win an election. You might believe that's not true. Let me show you all the way from like, okay, so 20, here's 2019, won by Mr. Blue Man. Here's 20, uh, 17, won by Mrs. Blue Woman. Here's 2015, won by Mrs. M Mr. Blue Man. Here's 2010, coalition between Blue Man and Orange Man. Here's 2005, okay, Tony Blair, Tony Blair, Tony Blair. 1992, Blue Man wins it. 1987, Blue Woman wins it. 1983, Blue Woman wins it. 1979, Blue Woman wins it. 1974 was the last time they won one by a single seat, by the way. And yeah, that maybe tells you about the position of the Red Party right now. Um, in terms of electorally speaking, it's 
tr it's pretty bad. This is this is not a win for blue. This is a huge resounding loss for red that needs to work out its identity as a party. Is it going to try to, you know, like uh, to hold the north and gain it again? Is it going to try to somehow get Scotland back with something radically new? Is it going to become the the metropolitan party? Is there are there enough metropolitan seats in the UK to do that? If you, you know, you need to swing a lot of the weird ones like the cities of London and Westminster and you need, like, uh, you know, these are the questions they have to ask as a party and the new leader has to come, come up with some new strategy because all it took for this new election result for the blue to win is just like, oh, Red's pretty weak in their literal heartlands. Come in, swoop a little bit up, a uh, little bit of hope from the light blue party, and it's a win. And that's 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 a big question they have to question uh, that I, I don't know the answer to. And uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot of people trying to spin it for their own benefits. But speaking of spinning things for their own benefits, let's talk about yellow, orange, and pink real quick. Because if you look at uh, you know if you look at Scotland, you'll notice this is by the way Scotland up here. You'll notice how like oh yeah, Scotland was pretty yellow before, and now you notice Scotland is almost entirely yellow. Funnily enough, this is actually the best result for Scotland uh, they've ever had in the 2015 election. They swapped, swapped 56 of these seats in Scotland, whereas this time oh no, they've only got 48. Wow. 48 of 59 seats, what a terrible result for them. And funny enough, in some ways this actually is a bad result, but in terms of actual actualities, in terms of overall, Scotland is firmly SNP, which if you don't know, just in this case we're going to actually talk about the party name because it's the Scottish Nationalist Party. They are the Nationalists in Scotland. Their number one policy that actually people rally behind is independence. Their second policy, secondary policy you can argue is like, well actually they also um, you know, they also have a big thing of like, you know, being anti-Brexit. So they want to leave the country, they want to leave the UK so they can join the EU, which makes more sense as the UK gets closer to leaving the EU, uh, is kind of their vague thing of like, we'll be an independent country inside of a larger, uh, and it's kind of like a big split in their own party of like, wait, why, why are we doing that? Why are we going to become independent just to, just to go back to a bigger, you know, block of countries where we're, this, we're a smaller part of the overall thing again. But again, it's a, there is a split in their own party, but it doesn't show on elections. They might not have a plurality, they might not have a majority, but what they do have is they have, or an absolute majority, what they have is they have a unionist vote, so people who want to remain with Scotland in the UK, split between the three parties, because all three have the same position, and then you have the nationalist vote split, you know, in one party, which means their 45% vote share translates into 48 seats, because first past the post means that you don't need to be overall the best, you just need to have a small lead over your opponents, and pretty much every seat in Scotland is a small lead. Although, fun fact, okay, I just find this one interesting. Fife North East, which I mentioned in my yesterday's video, uh, this is the seat which was won by two votes in 20, uh, 2017. Uh, interestingly enough, it should have gone uh, yellow. It's one of the surprises of the night, actually, because even uh, the Liberal Democrat leader, the Orange Party's leader, was, you know, the, her seat was taken by the yellow. The leader of the party, the Orange Party, which, by the way, made, uh, you know, vote gain shares, even in Scotland, uh, the leader of their party got wrecked, basically, and you can see. The, the interesting exception to that is in Fife North East, which was won by two votes by the yellow party, has gone back to the Orange Party. Although it doesn't look so fun on maps, seeing yellow going to orange, like, Oh, how exciting. Look, the yellow is now orange. But yeah, this is a story of how uh, the red has been wiped out from Scotland again, by the way, um, despite their policies for Scotland. Um, this is a story of the oranges winning a seat, losing a seat, doing better overall, but uh, really it's blues losing votes and them going to uh, the yellow. Because again, the same policy positions that work well in England for the blue party do pretty badly in Scotland. And yeah, that's kind of interesting. I should also just mention real quick... Um, while we're here, Northern Ireland, it's just a different beast. Like, look at their parties. Do you recognize these colors? No. Northern Ireland has its own political system that just happens to be conjoined to ours. So what happened in Northern Ireland, as you can see, is the APNI, which is kind of like this. The only centrist party in Northern Ireland, as best I know. Otherwise, you've got, like, nationalist full. Uh, sorry, you've got nationalist uh, full. National, oh, wait, nationalist full here. Uh, the uh, SF, they don't even take their seats because they're they're so nationalist, they don't believe that the parliament exists, they just run for it anyway, it's a whole confusing thing. You've got nationalist light, you've got a uh, full-on unionist, like, we would want the union if it killed us, and then you've got unionist light, who gained some votes but didn't get a single seat, and then, yeah, you've got the centrist party, which won a couple of seats, oh, it won a, a, a single seat, look how nice this is, um, that's, that's wonderful, right? Um, it's actually quite notable, the seat that they gained, because um, yeah, they, it was as a 35% swing in their favor. So in Northern Ireland, things are crazy. But it's kind of a different pitch to the rest of the UK. Just kind of bear in mind that, you know, the Northern Ireland's always done its politics differently. And now it looks like Scotland's going to join them. A lot of people look at this and say, well, this this means a united Ireland. And 
that's always possible. If, they, if Ireland has a referendum, at any point in time, if Ireland and Northern Ireland both agree to um, unite, the UK can't do anything about it. It's not as a part of them. Does Brexit make that more likely? Maybe, but I mean, uh, people who say, oh yeah, United Ireland's happening now. One, I mean, why does that bother anyone from England, uh, really? And two, um, it's always been allowed to happen. Since 1997, you know that leader, that, that terrible leader uh, from 1997, the one who's so unsuccessful that he won the largest majority the Red Party's ever had? Uh, he actually negotiated a peace settlement. That means that, like, it, it, there was terrorism happening until this happened. But, um, so yeah, basically, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's going on there. Um, uh, just a real quick talk about the story of the Orange. This is just a sad first-past-the-post thing. The Orange Party made significant gains. They're at 11.5%. But they're currently down a seat. They're likely to win the last seat. You know, it's how it's 649 of 650. There's wins stopping the votes being counted because the last seat, St. Ives, they have a bunch of uh, wins. They're called the Skilly Isles, I think. It's, it looks like it should be said Silly Isles, like, but it's Skilly. These, these Isles down here. Uh, these islands, their votes were counted, but they've got a... There's a boat and there's lots of winds. Like it looks like it might go orange, but like, you know, what? let's let's just let's just say right now either orange has lost the seat or they gained no seats and they lost their leader. So a bad night for them despite gaining votes and that's first past the post basically. Uh, places became more polarized between the blue and the red and even though you get more votes, you need to get votes in the right places uh, and otherwise it doesn't matter. Because if if we look at say for instance, let's go to um, the leader, the leader of their seat, right? East Dumbartonshire, which is some. I don't, I don't know my Scotland well enough. There's something I'm learning from this map right here. But um, if we actually go to East Dumbartonshire, which I'll find any second now. Um, I, I, oh, there we go. Dumbartonshire East. If you look at this seat right here, that their leader lost. Like, e by the way, by the way, like 100 votes or something. Um, you can see how, like, yep, the, those 19,000 votes that didn't win a seat, they were wasted. And this is a story you see all across the UK with uh, Red Car, 2,000 votes. Didn't go for anything. 2,300 votes in Bridgend didn't go for anything. 2,200 votes didn't count for anything. They came fourth with that. Um, and yeah, this is the sad story of them. Uh, this because they are a, a a party that's spread across the UK. Um, they don't get seats despite having eleven a uh, one in like just under one in eight people voted for them. And in exchange, they get uh, what is that like two percent of the of the population or two percent of the seats and 0% of the power, practically speaking. Uh, so yeah, the DUP also, they were in coalition with the, not coalition, in uh, supply and confidence conservatives uh, with the blue parties, so that went badly for them. And yeah, in general, uh, election time. It went, it went, it went okay. It went good for blue, their best result in uh, 22 years, uh, 32 years. Um, their best result in a very long time, uh, as it just so turns out. Uh, it went, uh, Wait, I guess it'd be like 27 or something. Uh, if you look at the Red Party, they had their worst result debatably ever. Um, <laughs> and their leader has refused. Uh, their leader has signals stepping down eventually, but uh, he doesn't want to step down right now. And because of the mechanics of the party, he doesn't need to step down, even if the membership and the people who lost, even if people want him out, he doesn't actually have to go until a whole bunch of processes happen. So that's going to be a fun drama unfolding. Um, the Yellow Party is going to use this as a push for Scottish independence and... Uh, Realistically, it's just going to strain the union because they don't, they're they not allowed to hold a referendum without the consent of the parliament, which is basically already said, nah. Uh, so that's going to cause some issues. Um, the Orange Party going down despite the huge gains and the fact that at one point they were predicted like, you know, like 50, 60 seats. Um, as the part, as the main party of Remain in this election, uh, it's looking bad that they got one fewer seat than before. And Northern Ireland, uh, again, like always before, has gone back to just being a thing that exists pre uh, prior to Because for the last two years, uh, the Northern Irish Party has been kind of uh, at the throat of the UK government because they needed to stay together. Now that's not necessary. Blue Party has a majority, which means we're going to see... A lot of people say the Tories have been in power for nine years. I'm going to say their name now, the, the Tories, the Conservatives. Um, this is their first time actually in power, and we're going to see how it actually turns out. A lot of people... I don't, this frustrates me so much when people, this is like the, the Brexit referendum thing, where both parties lie about the other party's position, and there are a lot of red people online who genuinely think the blue party will privatize the NHS and will tax, will remove all benefits and all, they're going to remove all the police officers and nurses are going to starve and, like, I, I don't understand uh, that we're going to leave Brexit and we're going to, the country's going to be so poor, but obviously, uh, one, the NHS thing is like, it's, it's just a, maybe you'll see an increase in the private services performed for the free of use healthcare, but we, we, we still have a national health service. And even with a majority that large, 
a lot of those blue people are very pro NHS because the UK you you got to remember our left right spectrum isn't the same as every other country. People, again, left right kind of depends on the centrist of ideas. Not a single right party has ever endorsed privatizing the NHS, and it wouldn't be popular if they did. And uh, if you assume democracy is about being elected on a platform and fulfilling that platform, then you can assume that the blue party will not do that. But if you don't trust democracy, then good news, uh, we can light everything on fire and we can try again. But yeah, no, thank you very much for watching today's video. Oh, by the way, turnout's down. This was the election where there was meant to be a youth quake. I mean, it was it was cold that day though, so. <laughs> but no, more seriously, um, there's a lot of very interesting things. Again, you can see orange getting across the board, red losing across the board, except in places where it lost more and in places where it lost slightly less, so only minus 6.4. Um, you can see a lot of interesting trends of this election. I, if you want to look into it more, you can. There's a lot of interesting things out there. Uh, by the way, the website I used, a lot of people asked how you get this seat map. Uh, it's called principalfish.co.uk. Don't ask me why it's called that. And uh, yeah, here's, here's the 2017 election. And here's what they predicted in 2019, their crazy over the top thing of like, wow, 350 seats. That'd be a lot for the red, uh, for the blue, sorry. Uh, they actually got 364. So yeah, things are looking pretty bad, all in all, uh, for the red party. And we're going to see what happens over the next five years before the next election. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, oh, look, the, the blue guy is going to see the queen. See, look at me. I'm going back to the, the whole thing. Um, yeah, I, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. Hope it simplified an election result that people are going to try and spin for their own cause. And again, to me, maybe to some extent you might be like, ah, Toy Cat trying to demonize the far left and also trying to not act like the blue party, the best one in the world. Uh, also, you're not trying to act like the oranges are so great and deserve all the seats. Also, why don't you love Scotland, Toy Cat? You know what? All these questions are valid. I hate I hate all the parties equally, and that means that I'm a pretty neutral party to make these videos. Clearly, right? <laughs> but no, thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll enjoy the video. Uh, and let's wait for these results from the Skilly Isles. Who knows? Could go either way. Um, but yeah, goodbye. Or is it? It is. Second channel. Do care.